大家好，我是刘庄长 ，and welcome back, guys. I hope you guys have been enjoying so far. Today we'll be talking about the first official chapter or lecture regarding livelihood and mensong in America itself. Today I want to focus on infrastructure, especially because of how much of an issue it is in the United States, in particular. In particular, the United States faces. In particular, the United States faces a lot of issues regarding infrastructure because of traffic. We must ask ourselves: How can we solve the issues of infrastructure? Across the United States, we face issues mainly revolved around long commutes, poor driving skills, and a suffering highway system. And because of the highway system that we currently have, people tend to have a lot of complaints and a lot of issues because of what they believe is a poor highway system, especially in states where there's a high density of people and where a lot of major cities are condensed and surrounded by many suburban towns. There is always a lot of traffic. It's especially true in states such as in Massachusetts here, where traffic has always been a massive issue. This is especially true for towns and suburbs around the Boston area that have to commute from their hometown and into Boston itself. And this issue of traffic is absolutely massive in highly dense suburban and urban areas because. When there is traffic, it when for every hour that you spend in traffic means an hour less you could be at work or doing something else that you desire to do. In 2020, we spent only 26 hours in traffic. Only 26. In 2019, we spent almost 100, and that's for each person on average. To imagine that we have to spend 100 hours. To literally just get to and from work per year. In light of COVID nineteen, we have seen a really dramatic change in traffic and commuting in the United States. We have had a drop of traffic delays by at least fifty percent, a drop of time spent traffic between seventy and eighty hours per person, and the and as a whole country, we have saved three point four billion hours. By not being in traffic, what then? This is whether because you work at home, you don't have a job, or that the fact that there are less people on the road. But we must understand why we have traffic, and how it occurs. In in a theoretical case, there should be no traffic, right? If everyone's going around the if if everyone is obeying the law, everyone's going around the same speed. Why is there traffic? Next time you guys go on the road, you should try to be a bit more mindful of exactly what's happening, so you know it's exactly why traffic occurs, where it happens, and what those potential reasons might be. On a personal level, I've seen a lot of car accidents and a lot of roadside locations. For me, at least, especially since I've only began driving during COVID-19, the fact that there are car accidents and that there are road signs that flash several different kinds of messages at, for the same sign, I believe are. Generally, the causes for traffic, especially since COVID nineteen began. When I when I drive on the road, there are a lot. Of, there are some car crashes, not as many as there probably were in twenty nineteen, but there still are some. And when these car crashes occur, there is a lot of traffic, despite the fact that we have fewer people driving. This this is, and this is despite the fact that there are less people currently driving than there was before I even began to drive. And when you consider these types of factors, it's it's there's a surprising feeling that you kind of discover this thing occurs. There was this there was this tendency, especially on ninety five and ninety three when I when I began driving, and I still notice it now. I really noticed how people tend to slow down at these two specific purposes and reasons. For one, car crashes. I kind of understand why you might have to slow down your car crashes, but it doesn't mean you have to stop. It doesn't mean you have to slam the brake going from 60 to 10 just to pass by the、uh, the car crash. Yes, you have to slow down. 
and reduce and significantly reduce the speed. But especially when I've been when I drive, I notice that people tend to do that much sooner than they should be. Like you see it coming up, you keep going at the same speed, and then you suddenly slow down, and then you speed back up. In doing so, it affects everyone else behind you. They end up slowing down. As they also end up slowing down sooner than they probably should be, and then it just accumulates and slowly that creates the traffic. And this is just from the this is just from you. Know, this is just from the issue of car crashes itself. Yes, you do have to reduce speed, but if you try to but if you try to maximize your time on the road, like. To speed up as you know, to go at a fast speed for as much as possible until you really have to slow down. In the end, it affects everyone else as well, where they too end up having they too, who if they, who if people behind you have that same mentality, they're going to stop sooner as well, break faster, and possibly even have to full, go on to a full stop. And as all, well, it creates a massive trend where. They go fast and it stops, and then accumulates back behind them, across multiple cars. It's across multiple cars, and this is why I predict is the main cause of traffic, especially in terms of car crashes. The, the people aren't slowing down for interstate signs. That's that's not the case. They're slowing down for those for the messages that that the state puts up. About mass compliance and about certain direction, certain detours or routes. Uh, this is especially this is especially detrimental if there are multiple messages on the same sign. It's gonna, you know, it's the black ones. They flash in the orange lights, and it's gonna flash a message. You know, keep your mask on, and then it's gonna flash another one that says stay six feet apart. But people that at least from what I've seen. Is that they're gonna slow down, read the first message, wait for the second one to read that one, and then go on, and that affects everyone behind them. And majority of those, a majority of the traffic I have been is in regards to the signs, and in regards to car crashes. Those are the two main reasons why I have been stuck in traffic in COVID nineteen. I'm not sure about you guys, but you know I would love to hear. Your experiences in traffic, and what you believe might have been the reason, and one of the oddest things, in fact, is how the other traffic, the you know the the other side of the highway, where people aren't affected by the car crash itself. You you don't have to slow down if you're on the other side of the road, because it's that car crash isn't affecting you. It's only for the people on the same road itself. If I'm going towards Boston, and there's a car crash on the way to Boston. Yeah, I'm going to, to slow down. But if you're leaving Boston and there's a car crash going into Boston, what is your purpose to slow down? You don't have to. As far as I legally know, you do not have to slow down for a car crash if you're not on the same directional road. You do not have to leave Boston and slow down for a car crash if if it's not on the same side of the road as you are. There is no point in that. And in fact, it's worse than traffic. It slows other people down behind you, because I, as I mentioned about the whole theory about maximizing your time on the road, I notice a lot of people tend to. I even I myself have that whole thing as well, where I should probably be stopping much earlier rather than sooner, because for one, it gives you a headache. I'll be honest. If you keep if you keep doing that over and over again, go as fast as you can, then suddenly stop. Fast as you can, then suddenly stop. It, it, you start to feel it in your head, you know, and you feel a bit, you know, kind of like a bit of sickness. I don't know if you guys have felt it too, but that's something I've noticed when I drive, and that affects your ability to drive as well. It's hard to think. It's harder to, you know, it's hard to coordinate exactly what you have to do because you're feeling this odd pain inside, inside of your head. And there are a couple other things on the road that I notice when it comes to traffic. You know, there's a whole move over law for for、um, emergency vehicles. Those I have no problem with. It's understandable why you have to slow down, stop, and move over for emergency vehicles. They have to get to a destination as soon as possible because lives are in danger. 
It could be a fire. Could be a, a, a shootout. It could be someone got injured, you know, seriously from wh whatever it could be. If someone's having, a, if someone is, you know, having a stroke, the ambulance has to come. There's no doubt about it. And to slow, and to slow the ambulance down, is going to risk the life of the person having a stroke. Because when it comes to those type of emergencies, like literally, it comes down to seconds. A lot of, a lot of. A lot of emergency event, a lot, a lot of emergency target locations that have an emergency go actively going on, those type of situations end within minutes. If you're in a shootout, it's going to be over within a couple minutes. If you're bleeding on the ground, you can die within the next 10 to 15 minutes, depending on, you know, depending on how bad it could be. And damage to the brain. You know, if you could get there a couple seconds earlier and work on the person having the stroke or whatever head injury could be, it could be literally life or death. And that's why we have those move over laws. It's understandable and it makes sense. But what is it about infrastructure that's so bad? We have traffic, we have move over laws. That's kind of basic. But then you have to, you have to wonder. What else is affecting our traffic? What else is affecting our ability to commute from home to the workplace? But well, how can we improve infrastructure? It is vital, absolutely vital, that our highways work, that our emergency vehicles are in operation, that people are trained, people know how to drive, and that resources and goods and services that we need and use on a daily basis get from where they are to where they need to be. It is absolutely vital for a working economy to have an actively functioning infrastructure. And if the infrastructure is faltering, then it has to be fixed immediately. Because if not, it can affect people on a grand scale. I use traffic as an example because it is a direct link to the effects of life for the average person. If you have to drive from work and go onto the highway and you face traffic, it could mean that you're late. It could result in less money being made on that on that day, less time, more time being spent in the car also uses up more gas. And if you aren't in constant motion on the road and you have to keep stopping and you know, and you have to keep using the gas pedal and the brake pedal over and over again, you end up using more gas than if you were just constantly going at a slower speed. So then the question is, how can we improve infrastructure? I thank you guys all for watching and being patient with me on this project. I hope to continue this throughout the summer and be completed before the beginning of my sophomore year. I believe that this is a very difficult issue to deal with, but there's only one way to fix it, by opening up the debate and discussion on how to improve the current ways of life that we live. The best way we can oversee these issues should be done in a practical and pragmatic manner, while also still pertaining to the values that we as Americans believe in. To preserve the leisure and frames we have, we must focus on what it is that is allowing these values to falter whether it's the faults of corruption, government, capitalism, morality, or any other problem that we may face. There is nothing wrong with trying to find the faults we have, especially if they put the future in jeopardy. The goals should be clear. Revive the economy, improve democracy, and preserve the values of freedom and liberty.